In the quiet town of Niigata, Japan, a mysterious event unfolded that would send shockwaves throughout the nation. Nestled between mountains and sea, Niigata was known for its serene landscapes and the tranquil rhythm of everyday life. It was a place where neighbors knew each other, where children played freely in the streets and where safety was a given. In this peaceful backdrop, we find Fusako Sano, a nine-year-old girl with a radiant smile and a love for life. Fusako was like any other child her age, playful, curious, and full of dreams. Her days were filled with school, friends, and the simple joys of childhood. One chilly November day in 1988, Fusako, like many children her age, was caught in the excitement of a local baseball game. The cheers, the camaraderie, the thrill of the game, it was a day like any other. A day of joy and innocence. But as the game drew to a close and the crowd started to disperse, something unimaginable happened. Fusako Sano, the bright-eyed nine-year-old, was nowhere to be found. The news of her disappearance spread like wildfire, casting a dark shadow over the peaceful town. Her family, paralyzed with fear, searched frantically for their beloved daughter. Friends and neighbors joined in, their hearts heavy with worry. The local community, once so serene, was now filled with a palpable sense of dread. The unthinkable had happened. A child had vanished from their midst. The disappearance of Fusako Sano was not just a personal tragedy, but a collective one. It shook the very foundations of this quiet town, shattering its sense of security. As the hours turned into days, the town held its breath, hoping against hope for Fusako's safe return. But as the sun set, the small town of Niigata was left grappling with the unthinkable. Fusako Sano had vanished. The local police launched an extensive search, but the trail of Fusako Sano went cold. From day one, the local police poured their resources into the search for Fusako. Search parties were organized, combing through the town and its surrounding areas. Every nook and cranny, every alley, every obscure corner was scrutinized all in the hopes of finding a clue, a hint, anything that would lead to Fusako. The community too rallied together, their collective efforts fueled by a mix of desperation and hope. As the days turned into weeks, the police left no stone unturned. From the dense, eerie woodland to the quiet, unsettling riverbanks, everything was searched and searched again. They delved into Fusako's life, her habits, her friends, her daily routines, hoping to find something that might point them in the right direction. Yet the leads were sparse and the trail was growing increasingly cold. The few clues they managed to find led to dead ends, adding to the mounting frustration. The shadow of Fusako's disappearance loomed large over the town, casting a pall of dread and uncertainty. The community, once vibrant and lively, was now subdued, the atmosphere heavy with the unsaid fear of what might have happened to Fusako, Weeks turned into months, and the initial surge of hope began to wane. The extensive search efforts, the sleepless nights, the tireless investigations, everything seemed to be in vain. The lack of progress was disheartening. The once bustling police station now echoed with the sound of despair. The community too was gripped by a sense of helplessness, their efforts yielding no results. Yet despite the growing despair, the search for Fusako didn't cease. The police continued their relentless pursuit. The community held on to the hope of finding her, and her family clung to the belief that Fusako was still out there, waiting to be found. Despite all the efforts, the mystery of Fusako Sano's disappearance deepened, leaving a town in despair and a family in agony. Nearly a decade later, the unexpected happened. Fusako Sano reappeared. Let those words sink in for a moment. Imagine the shock, the disbelief, the relief when Fusako Sano, a name synonymous with a mystery that had baffled a nation for nearly 10 years, resurfaced in 2000. The circumstances of her discovery were as unexpected as her disappearance. The man who had held her captive for all those years, Nobuyuki Sato, had fallen ill. He had to seek medical attention. Little did he know this would be the unraveling of his carefully constructed web of deceit. Sato visited a hospital where, in a twist of fate, a doctor noticed his peculiar behavior. The doctor's intuition kicked in, and he alerted the authorities. The police intervened, and a subsequent investigation led them to Sato's apartment. 
There, in an ordinary apartment in Niigata City, they found the extraordinary. Fusako Sano, the girl who had vanished almost a decade ago, was there. She was alive. She had been living in that apartment, in isolation from the outside world for almost ten years. The shock of her discovery rippled through the nation. The girl who had been taken from a baseball game, whose face had been imprinted on thousands of missing person flyers, was no longer missing. But she was not the same Fusako Sano who had disappeared that fateful day. She had been held captive, isolated from the world for nearly a decade. She had missed out on the mundane and the monumental. Her life had been put on pause while the world outside moved on. Fusako's rescue was a moment of triumph, of relief. But it was also a moment that marked the end of one ordeal and the beginning of another. Fusako Sano had to learn to live again. To fit into a world that had moved on without her. In a twist that no one could have foreseen, Fusako Sano was found. Alive but forever changed. The return of Fusako Sano was not the end, but rather the beginning of another chapter. In the wake of Fusako's return, a whirlwind of events unfolded. The man responsible for her nine-year ordeal, Nobuyuki Sato, was promptly arrested and brought to justice. The trial was a spectacle, drawing national attention as the horrifying details of Fusako's captivity were laid bare. Sato was eventually handed down a lengthy sentence, a small measure of justice for the stolen years. Fusako, now a woman in her late twenties, was thrust back into a world that had moved on without her. The psychological impact was immense. She had to grapple with the lost years, the trauma and the arduous task of rebuilding her life. The journey was far from easy, but Fusako showed remarkable resilience, a testament to the human spirit's capacity to endure. The community too was deeply affected. The case had shone a harsh light on the vulnerabilities within their midst. The media storm that followed kept the story alive, probing every aspect of it. This intense scrutiny led to a heightened awareness of child safety issues, sparking conversations and debates across the nation. In response, Japanese society and law enforcement underwent significant changes. New measures were implemented to improve the safety of children. Law enforcement agencies revamped their procedures, bolstering their efforts to promptly and effectively respond to missing persons cases. The case of Fusako Sano became a catalyst for change, pushing the nation towards a safer future for its children. At the heart of it all was Fusako, a symbol of survival and resilience. Her story served as a stark reminder of the horrors that could lurk in the shadows, but also of the strength that could emerge from adversity. Her fight, her survival and her return inspired a nation, making her an unwitting hero in a tale of hope and change. The case of Fusako Sano, a story of loss, survival and resilience, left an indelible mark on a nation and changed the face of child safety in Japan forever.